What's up guys, we just got back from a three-day river safari in Kinabatangan here in Malaysian Borneo. And in this video, we're going to show you how you can do it yourself, as well as explain some of the beautiful animals that you can see. So hope you enjoy it. The Kinabatangan River flows through northeastern Sabah, which is part of Borneo Island in Malaysia. It's the second longest river in Malaysia measuring 560 kilometers or 350 miles from its headwaters in the mountains to its outlet in the sea. The river is known to be one of the best and most easily accessible places to see unique wildlife in Southeast Asia. Some of Borneo's most intriguing animals live along the riverbanks, such as the Borneo Big Five. This consists of orangutans, proboscis monkeys, pygmy elephants, crocodiles, and hornbill birds. In this video, we'll show you our three-day Kinabatangan River Safari experience. We'll go over each day of our trip, explaining the rare animals that we encountered during our activities. Make sure to watch until the end, as we also give our honest review and travel tips. Now let's dive in. We are Zach and Ina. We make helpful videos about destinations around the world so you can easily plan your own adventures. The Kinabatangan Safari generally starts with a pickup in either Sepilok or Sandakan. We decided to stay in Sepilok a day before our tour to visit the wildlife sanctuaries in the area. There's a well-known orangutan sanctuary with feeding platforms and a nursery where you can see these amazing animals up close. Next door, there's also a sun bear sanctuary, which are considered to be the world's smallest bears. It's a great introduction to Borneo wildlife and prepares you for what's to come. The drive took around two and a half hours from Sepilok. And after check-in, a quick orientation session, and a tea break, we joined our first boat cruise in search of wildlife along the banks of the Kinabatangan River. We were very lucky on our first day, as we spotted silverleaf monkeys, hornbills, and proboscis monkeys. Proboscis monkeys are long-nosed monkeys that can only be found in Borneo. And even though they're endangered, it's one of the easier animals to spot along the river. This is because they live in groups and tend to jump around the trees. After one and a half hours on the river, we returned to the lodge and got to talk to our guide about his favorite animals to spot, as well as the animal protection initiatives going on around the river. My name is Omar. Yeah. I involved guide already almost 10 years already. My favorite animals around here, around 10, proboscis monkey, silver lip monkey, slow lorries. We always welcome tourists come here to see our wildlife around here as well. They have as well pandings for our uh, tree planting to make corridor for the wildlife. To cap off our first night, we went on a night walk in search of nocturnal animals. On the walk, we spotted many insects, bats, and some birds. It was a muddy and sweaty activity, but also an exciting experience to end the first day. On day two, we woke up early to start our morning river cruise at 6 a.m. in search of more wildlife and birds. We were lucky to spot an orangutan in the wild this time. This is one of our favorite animals, and humans actually share about 97% of DNA with them. They're not as easy to spot as other monkeys since they spend most of their time by themselves high up in the trees. <laughs> Besides this rare encounter, we also observed crocodiles, hornbills, and more proboscis monkeys. After about an hour, we returned for breakfast and joined a morning trek in the jungle, where we encountered more interesting creatures. So we're about to go out on our third boat tour of this trip uh, with our guide Omar. We're really excited for it because every time we've stepped on that boat, we've seen something new and spectacular. So 
excited to see what animals we find this time. After cruising the river for about 30 minutes, we were lucky to locate a group of pygmy elephants. They were eating close to the riverbanks, so we got a great look at them. These elephants are the smallest Asian elephant subspecies, and you can recognize them by their long tails, large ears, and straighter tusks. We spent most of our cruise time observing these intelligent animals. After another successful safari, dinner was served at the lodge, followed by another guided night trek a little further into the jungle. We identified more insects, but the highlight was spotting a slow loris right near the lodge. This nocturnal animal moved slowly but persistently through the trees, while hardly making any noise. We were really lucky to notice this little guy, which made for another great ending to our day. On our last day, we rose early again to do a final river cruise. The safari started off quiet, reminding us that spotting wildlife requires patience and a bit of luck. But after some time, we started to see more movement in the trees and water. Families of macaques and proboscis monkeys were playing, while crocodiles were patrolling the riverbank. Some of the crocodiles we observed were absolutely huge. After an hour, we returned back to the lodge for breakfast. And around 8.30 in the morning, we departed, and were transported back to Sepilok and Sandakan. This three-day safari was our most memorable experience in all of Malaysia. Spending three days at the Kinabatangan River gave us the best chance to see as much wildlife as possible. We were very lucky to spot the big five along the riverbanks. But of course, that's never a guarantee, and luck has to be on your side. Another thing we really enjoyed about this tour was the full immersion into nature, with plenty of sunrise and sunset river cruises, jungle treks, and night walks. On day two, there was plenty of time to rest during the day, which can be a bit boring. But to kill time, we recommend bringing some games. Surprisingly, there's also mobile reception, so you're not fully disconnected from the outside world. To get the most out of your Kinabatangan River Safari, here are three travel tips based on things that we learned. First, as you're visiting a rainforest, you need to be prepared for humid and wet weather, as well as many insects. Try to bring lightweight and breathable clothing that covers your arms and legs. This is especially essential for the jungle walks, as there are so many mosquitoes, leeches, and other bugs. Also bring strong insect repellent, sunblock, a hat, and a raincoat, as well as binoculars if you don't have a camera with a zoom lens. Rubber boots are available for rent at the lodge, and you'll 100% need them. Second, it is possible to visit the Kinabatangan River year-round. However, there will be stronger and more frequent rainfalls during December and January, causing floods. During the driest months between March and September, it's generally easier to spot wildlife. We visited at the end of February, and we're lucky not to have any rain showers during our activities. But be aware that rain does occur at any time of the day, any time of the year. Finally, as we highlighted before, seeing a diversity of wildlife is never guaranteed but you definitely increase your chances by staying multiple days and going on lots of boat cruises. With varied accommodation options ranging from private rooms to shared dorms, a Kinabatangan river trip can accommodate about all budgets and comfort levels. We hope you enjoyed our video on the Kinabatangan River. If you're planning your Malaysia trip, we recommend keeping things organized with our interactive travel planner. Find a discount code below. We also included a link to the three-day tour that we did in the description below the video, in case you want to do the same one. We'll catch you on the next adventure.